Good day fellow investors. The most important Saturday for value investors this year is today. So I really want to do a quick Berkshire valuation stock perspective update before we do another video on the earnings that come in, talk through them. And then of course, as every year, the summary for Berkshire's conference. If you enjoy Warren Buffett, Berkshire, Charlie Munger, please smash that like button. Let's immediately start by discussing the stock price, the valuation, what impacts currently Berkshire valuation, and then we'll adjust for the earnings if necessary, even if I think it won't be necessary because Berkshire is such a stable business that you practically know what will happen ahead. Let's start. So the first thing is that if we look at Berkshire's stock performance over the last year, it is up, what is this, 64%. So really, really staggering performance for a big company, but it is in line with what's going on with the market, with the stimulus, with the free money, with low interest rates. However, we have to see now whether this is still a buy or a hold. I am long Berkshire as disclaimer so that you know. Also, what is key here is that now that the stock price is higher in uh, May and in March of 2020, I made a few videos discussing how Berkshire is giving a 10% business return from that price, which is something that you don't see often, Berkshire trading at a long-term price earnings ratio of just 10, and therefore it is a buy, and that's exactly when I bought. Now, the situation is different from a stock price perspective, but Berkshire is always Berkshire. And that's something you have to keep in mind. Because what changed with Berkshire? The valuation changed. The market's perspective on Berkshire or the market change, Berkshire doesn't change that fast. Buffett is Buffett. So this is, of course, Berkshire's stock price since 2008. It was, this is Berkshire B already. So we are now very high, all time highs, but it was much, much lower. These are the earnings per share. Since the different accounting perspective, earnings became much more volatile, but we have to exclude the stock prices and then get to a price earnings ratio. We'll discuss that more in the earnings that are coming. But if we look at the market capitalization, it's 637 billion. Keep in mind that number. And if we go to our intrinsic value table that you can always download in the link in the description below, Berkshire, I have taken cash flows of 32 billion. If you look at the market capitalization, 644 billion, and we have to compare the earnings or the cash flows with this. Let's see just here, Morningstar, what do they project? They have it fair valued, fairly valued now, but I always like to look at what I think about the company. And if you go to Morningstar, I think this should be free. I have it as a premium version, but I think these key ratios that if you go here, quote, key ratios, key ratios data, you get this overview of 10 years of data for a company. And you can also look here at the free cash flow. So free cash flows that are adjusted for the ups and downs of the stock market are 26 billion lately estimated also like that. Plus with Berkshire, you have the hidden earnings that we discussed in another video, put the link in the description below, of around six, seven, eight billion that are not included in the financial statements because if Apple earns, I don't know, $6.5 per share, pays a dividend of $1, just the $1 is represented in Berkshire's earnings. The 5.5 is not. And that's also something that we have to calculate. The hidden earnings, I'm sure Buffett will discuss them today on the conference. So that's something also to keep in mind. But Let's say that Berkshire in a year, normal year, earns $32 billion. If we put those $32 billion in the cash flow here, they don't pay dividends, so there is no present value. Here, the growth rate is, let's say, 5% ahead. Maybe it will be even a little bit higher, but let's take conservative. I am taking my 10% discount rate, and now here we come to the terminal multiple. Currently, 
the market is giving a 20 terminal multiple for Berkshire and that's also let's say intrinsic value is still below the current market cap by far but if you put a discount rate of six percent then five percent even lower then we are there to the return so currently investors in Berkshire can expect a 5% discount rate. If Berkshire in a best case scenario grows faster 7, 7% we have to put back the discount rate to 10% then with a terminal multiple of 20 10 years down the road and I have to delete this because Berkshire doesn't pay a dividend then the present value sum is 453 billion. So still overvalued for a 10% but for a 6% return it is let's say fairly valued and that's logical and that's the first message of today that if a stock price goes up the long-term returns obviously mathematically go down that's one of the few and rare certainties when it comes to stock market investing so as the stock price went up up and up of course the returns must be lower when the stock price is low then the returns as it has been the case over the last 10 years then the returns are logically higher so six percent is not stellar but on the other hand Berkshire is Berkshire it will keep growing it is a financial fortress it gives you a big margin of safety from a business perspective it's one of the few businesses that we know won't go bankrupt because Warren Buffett has 140 50 billion dollars of cash for protection he always wants to sleep well so that's Berkshire I'll have to see 6% is really low for me I'll have to see whether I'll just keep the profits of 40-50% and with the remaining capital invest into something else as this is part of my large portfolio. So if you have a USD focus, if there is more inflation, Berkshire might do good. If there is trouble in insurance, Berkshire might buy other insurance. So increase the growth rate over the long term. You never know what will those guys do. If you have an international perspective, Berkshire also carries USD risk because if the dollar goes down, that doesn't impact an American but if you are an European you might have weaker returns in your currency if the dollar weakens further so that's also something to consider your exposure to great businesses but also to countries to economies and here a little bit of macro comes into play of course it's hard to predict but it's not about predicting, it's about what you need. So that's a message for the international investors looking at Berkshire. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon for the earnings update and the conference call summary. Please click that like button if you enjoyed these videos.